Eight days since the commencement of Operation Linda Nchi, the Kenya Defense Force continues getting support in the fight against the Al Shabaab. The French naval gunship patrolling Somali water bombarded the town of Kude, which is south of Kismayo, one of Al Shabaab's strongholds. Casualty figures have not yet been confirmed, but the French Navy is expected to give an assessment report soon. Kenyan troops, in cooperation with the transitional federal government of Somali forces, have currently occupied Odo and are closing into Burgavo town. Business is said to have resumed in the town of Odo and residents there are requesting for the opening of the border. The Al-Shabaab militants are believed to be heavily regrouping in Bulhaji and moving towards Afmado. But army officers are expressing confidence that they are now in a better position to maneuver thanks to the subsiding rains. Some of the Kenya Defense Forces troops have also moved through Elwak, 35 kilometers inside Somalia, with the intent of capturing Busar. The military say will continue until Al-Shabaab threat has been neutralized. U.S. drones, African Union soldiers, Somali troops and now the French Navy are the other forces targeting the Al-Shabaab militants. Irene Choke, NTV. Several anti-U.S. protests broke out in Metropolis Peshawar, wherein tens of thousands of people participated with high anti-American sentiments. The protests were instigated when Pakistan's tribal people gathered in Peshawar city on Sunday with the aim to strongly oppose what they called killing of innocent tribesmen by U.S. drone strikes in Pakistan's tribal areas. Our Kabaili... The so-called war on terror has made our lives miserable. U.S. drone attacks are sheer violation of our country's sovereignty. We have gathered here today to protest the U.S. aggression on our soil. We demand an immediate end to drone attacks on our tribal areas. The gathering was soon followed by another anti-U.S. demonstration in which hundreds of people voiced their anger at U.S. violations of Pakistan's sovereignty through drone strikes and Washington's insistence on forcing Pakistan to expand military operations to the country's northwestern tribal regions on the Pakistan border. Since 2008, the U.S. has carried out at least 270 drone attacks in Pakistan's northwest, which Washington believes a safe haven of Al-Qaeda-linked militants. These attacks have led to the loss of more than 2,500 Pakistani civilians, mostly innocent women and children. The protest, which was organized by the country's biggest religious party, Jamaat Islami, called for immediate end to U.S. drone attacks in the country's northwest and urged the government to act no more by Washington's demands. Yet the anti-U.S. emotions rose higher when tens of thousands of people, including political and religious figures, participated in a grand conference named as Mufti Mahmood Conference, which viewed the country's worsening security situation and instability, the result of U.S. violations of Pakistan's sovereignty and Washington's growing influence over Islamabad. The security situation has become from bad to worse because of the American presence in the area. Before the foreign occupation, there was peace in our tribal areas. The drone attacks have killed mostly our near and dear ones. There can't be peace until Americans and NATO forces pull out from this region. The conference, which was called by Jamiat Ulema Islam, called for unification of the nation against the United States and its interference in Pakistan's internal affairs. A vast majority of Pakistanis believes the U.S. is responsible for the violence and unrest that have been prevailing in the country since Pakistan allied with the United States in the war against terror following the 9-11 attacks. Zahid Hussain, Press TV, Pishaw. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, October 24th, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is part two of this news bulletin. Uh, we're just going to continue into the war of terror, the reign of terror. Um, uh, basically, Middle East and uh, police state uh, type news. Uh, my website is ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Also, ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel. Yeah, it does get redundant saying that, but either way. Okay, so we have this one. We already covered this uh, as, uh, very briefly, but left behind in Iraq, thousands of contractors with the removal of the U.S. troops from Libya, or I'm sorry, Iraq. <laughs> Maybe that's a. Uh, 
uh, a little um, something coming down the road, uh, boots on the ground in Libya. But uh, but it goes in there and talks about the uh, you know these private contractors that are going to rem remain over there in Iraq. So you know just giving you the whole illusion that uh, you know this was done by the Iraqi people <laughs> and uh, to, like the Libyan people, and now they're liberated. Uh, and says here, after Iraq war, U.S. to shift focus to Asia. So now that they're done uh, with basically overthrowing ancient Babylon um, and uh, taking their resources, it says here that Barrier Sotoro and his regime have announced that all American troops are leaving Iraq by the year's end, largely missed the most important strategic implication. The winding down of wars in Iraq and Afghanistan clears the way for the U.S. to shift its focus. And when they say the U.S., just remember, uh, for people that are not, quote, Americans, most Americans aren't even for this. When they say the U.S., they're talking about the corporation, the United States, which is a subsidiary of gold, of the Goldman Sachs and the Rothschild Group and all that. So it's not actually the people that are doing any of this. And um, I'm talking about the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. I mean, it's just killing innocent people. That's what they're doing. So it's corporations, it's the Rothschilds family. They're killing innocent people in our name. So just so you know that, yeah, we're paying for it. But, I mean, if you don't pay, they'll come to your house and they'll shoot you in the fucking head. Okay, so it says here, for the U.S. to shift its focus, in particular, China, the part of the world that likely matters the most in the long run. That's interesting because what? I'm going to cover... Uh, how we, how this is kind of focusing how how this is moving towards China. I said this two years ago about how I it's my own personal um, theory, or I don't want to say it's a prediction, but Central Asia, Kyrgyzstan, all them uh, areas around there, um, Tajikistan, you know, uh, basically buffer countries between Russia, China. Um, the Middle East, and basically all the other little countries that are puppet regimes of the West, Israel, and the United States. So um, that that could be the the new battleground or the last battleground um, while all of the shit hits the fan. So we'll see. Okay, so I have a lot of news to get to, so I'm going to just keep moving. Israel and America declare a total war on Persia, the state of the terrorist state regimes of Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Washington. The United States are madly pushing for World War III in the Middle East, and it says it fought to the very end will bring down many of the nations, Israel, America. America and Iran will all be destroyed. It says down here, if you've uh, been anticipating Armageddon your whole life, then stop anticipating and start preparing for what's ahead. The real thing will be upon us soon. Our mad leaders and the establishment media are dragging us all to hell down the hills of lies, and there's no coming back. And it's well put. Go in there and check it out. I believe it's a blog. Iran says UN cannot impose sanctions on its central bank. Wow, that's funny because I think Libya had a central bank too, which made it a sovereign country. And um, they had gold and they had oil. And uh, yeah, the IMF World Bank and Rothschild's lending um, cartel does not like that very much. Afghans protest U.S. stay beyond 2014. So hundreds of Afghans have taken to the streets in the city of, of uh, Kabul to voice opposition to the presence of U.S. troops in Afghanistan beyond 2014. So, you know, of course, you know, NATO battles insurgents along Afghan-Pakistan border. What does that mean? It means that they killed 115 people who are trying to fight invaders from coming in their country. It'd be like uh, militias in America fighting against Chinese coming in. That's that's what it would be, and that's how the title is going to be. Um, NATO UN um, kills 115 American uh, patriot militiamen um, as, uh, you know, basically they're being taken over. So just uh, think about that in the future because it, it is going to become a reality, I think. Afghanistan to back Pakistan if wars with uh, U.S. says Karzai, so there you go. Pakistan and Afghanistan would uh, support each other, so that's a big deal. And then you saw that meeting going on in Pakistan. That's a pretty big deal, too. I cover those every once in a while, those meetings in Pakistan by the tribal leaders, and that looks by, that looked by far the one of the biggest, most organized one yet. So uh, a lot of alliances are being created at this time. It says Tunisian Islamist Party set to win vote. Tunisia's moderate Islamist Party appeared to set a divisive victory in the country's elections, and it's a historic test for how the region's long suppressed Islamic movements will govern. Of course, they're talking about what? Democracy. And uh, I know this isn't Tunisia, but this is Yemen. And it's, a, it's in the news all the time about the ousting of uh, Salih. And uh, it's kind of interesting because um, uh, Mr. Salih here, um, he cited himself as an ally with Iraq's Saddam Hussein. Um, and, and look at it here. It says on 97, Parliament approved Salih's promotion 
And it said, but what was this actually? A 93 parliamentary election, the first held after unification. So these general people's Congress won. Um, and it says here that he won 96% of the vote. And so he also um, sided with Iran. So my point was, was that uh, just like in Libya, what do you have now? Oh, Sharia law is now imposed. So now you have the um, uh, Muslim extremists now in power, and the U.S. backed that. So now you have Islamist parties going in in Tunisia. Again, they're creating a vacuum. And here with Salih, um, you know, Sunni, he's talking about Sunni secessionists and that, and uh, him, you know, um, siding with the Shiites and Iran and that. So, I mean, this is a big deal. And it says here, Argentina President Cristina Fernandez, re-election fueled by economic boom. Well, what's the economic boom? I remember we had talked about the, all of the Falkland Wars and that. And uh, we were talking about how the UK and Britain went in there and basically created all these wars. And lo and behold, now they're going in there and actually divvying up all the oil and the contracts and the mineral rights and all that stuff. So maybe that's where that boom's coming from. But basically what we have here is what? Oh, look at that. Cheers, Bankai. Yeah, the UN and the global government. A nice son of Ra back there too. But uh, And in black. But it says here that look at that. She's hugging uh, Barrio Satoro. Barrio Satoro. Uh, the non-U.S. citizen, uh, basically born what in Kenya and stuff like that, schooled in a Muslim school in Indonesia. So I mean, there, there's there's your real leaders right there um, that are being quote elected. Next up is China makes single largest grain donation to Africa, and why do you think that is? Well, because China already has uh, people over there in, in infrastructure and buildings in Africa. They're investing in Africa because they want the resources. That's what it's a lot of it's about. And uh, so they're just basically, you know, they're doing what the, every, all the other countries do. It says here they're trying to bribe them. China to legally define terrorist activities. Look at this. China's legislator on Monday began reading an anti-terrorism draft bill, which is expected to pave the way for further crackdowns on terrorism by defining terrorist acts and organizations. Well, I'll go on a limb and define this for you. It's the same as the U.S. If you're anyone that is suspicious, is uh, suspicious of uh, not liking what the, your government is doing to you, not in your name, but as a dictatorship, you are a terrorist. If you don't like, you know, your country doing and killing people with your money in your name, and you want to voice your opinion about it, you're a terrorist. If you support all of the atrocities that your government does, if you want to call it yours is a good citizen and if you're a good citizen if you see something you better say something says here and that's from homeland security napolitano a uh, little program u.s territory offers to lease land to china so it says here the cash strat northern mariana islands u.s ter territory in the western pacific is offered to lease land to china as long as it's not used for military purposes and in idaho china actually has like little um buildings and land and stuff there as well analysis china u.s sees guam as military central basically goes in there and uh, talks about the People's Online and a little f online forum um, and saying how the Chinese were looking at Guam as, uh, as basically a strategic point to strike China and says that uh, they were hardening all of their defenses says here that uh, air defensive systems were being moved into to protect against the Chinese. Just one side note, I think I actually stayed right around here at one of these hotels on this part of the island right here it's a beautiful island but it is kind of sad because you see all the malls and the burger king and you see all the local indigenous people who live in these shacks and stuff like that and then there's like these big glamorous hotels and, and that on the for the tourists it's, it is kind of sad u.s filipino marines hold drill oh yeah and when i was there rumsfeld actually showed up at the marine corps ball what a douche <laughs> U.S. Filipino Marines hold drill near disputed islands, so more than 200 U.S. and Filipino Marines stage an amphibious assault on the beach, combat drill near the South China Sea, so there you go. Okay, and a possible presidential candidate fill in for Palin says Bachman, China has blinding U.S. satellites with their lasers, and I'm almost wondering if they're shooting them down, falling German satellite enters atmosphere. This is the most recent one, then satellite debris could hit U.S., that's the one before. I'm wondering if they're actually shooting um, these satellites out of the sky. Finishing up, is the Declaration of Independence illegal in Philadelphia? American British law lawyers uh, have, or liars, I almost said liars, have debated the legality of Americans' founding documents. Namely, just what did Thomas Jefferson think he was doing? Yeah, and it goes in there and talks about Romney and the, all these sellout politicians that don't represent you and how they have Mexican uh, people cutting their grass and stuff like that, ignoring basically all of the other bullshit. Police spy tricked lover with activist cover story says here he used false identity in the 80s to infiltrate protest movements while working for the Metropolitan Police Special. Did you know the feds will temporarily cut off all TV and radio broadcasts 
on November 9th. And that's on Wednesday, November 9th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the first ever test of the National Emergency Alert System. I wonder what that's going to be used for, guys. GGN, and I'm Darko.